Sometimes when we have a sea of values, it can be difficult to see exactly what's going on. And this is where pivot tables do really well because they have the option to insert a blank row between each item. Now we don't always want to pivot or aggregate our data. So in this video, we're going to look at a technique to insert a blank row that will work with any array or range of cells. So if you're ready, let's get started. On the left, we have a table of data, which is ingeniously called data. Let's assume we are creating a report or a piece of analysis. And one part of this is showing the data in ascending order by product. In cell F6, I'll type equals. Then we're going to use the sort function. I'll enter an opening bracket, and then I can select my entire data table. I'll now close that bracket at the end. When we commit that, we get the values in ascending order based on the first column. Now, this is a little tricky to read. So it would be nice to have a blank row between each item. And this is where things get really interesting from an Excel perspective, because we're going to achieve this using some array techniques. Let's edit the formula in F6. At the start, we will add the let function. Let allows us to assign calculation results to names, and then we can refer to those names later in the formula. Our first name will be calc. This will be the result of the sort function we created earlier. We want to insert a blank row based on the values in the first column. So we will create a new name called compare by. And for that, we want to use the choose coles function. For the first argument of array, we want the result from our calc name and we want column one. So that will give us the first column. Now we want to know where the values in the first column are not identical to the row above. For this, we will create a new name called compare. In there, we want to use the drop function. The array will be our compare by name, and we want to drop the first row. So I will enter one. Then we want to check where that does not equal we want to enter the drop function again. The array will be the compare by, and this time we want to drop the last row. So that will be minus one. This calculation will give us a true or false to indicate whether our value is not equal to the row above. Now this also means that we have dropped the first row because there is nothing for the first row to compare to. So let's go back. We're going to add a V stack at the start and we're going to add an initial value of false. So that means our first row will always have a value of false. Then we can close our V stack at the end. Next, let's create a list of row numbers. For this, we will create a name called index, and the calculation is going to use the sequence function, and we want a sequence which has the same number of rows as our calc result. So that means it will create a sequence of one, then two, then three, and so on for the number of rows in our calc result. Compare gives us a list of true or false values and index gives us a list of row numbers. So using these two lists, we can discover the position of where each row changes. Let's create a new name called filter index. And for that, we will use the filter function we want to filter our index column, which is our row numbers, and we only want to return the values where the result from our compare calculation are true. So that means we have a list of positions where we want to add a blank row. Next, we need to create our blank row for each of those positions. Let's create a name called blank values. For this, we will use the sequence function and we want a sequence which has the number of rows in our filter index and the number of columns in our original calc array. Now we don't care what these numbers are. We just care that all these numbers are greater than zero because we're going to go back and add an if statement and check whether if the numbers in the sequence function are non-zero numbers, which they will be, in that scenario, they're going to return an empty text string. That means we now have an array of blank values 
and it's these values that we are going to insert into our original array. We now have everything we need, so let's create a name called result. For this, we want to combine the values into a single array. So we will use vStack, and we want to stack our blank values and then the calc. Now we need to sort these values. Therefore, we're going to go back to the start and add the sort by function. And we want to sort our combined array by the vStack of the filter index, which is the positions where we want to enter our blank values, and also the index, which is our list of row numbers. And that's it. So let's display the result. The last argument of let is the value to return, and we want to return our result name. When we calculate, we now get our array with a blank row between each item. I can probably guess what you're thinking. What if our calculation isn't the sort of a table? What if it's a filter? Or what if it's something else? Well, let's go and take a look at some more scenarios. Let's suggest that we want to filter our data. So instead of referencing data, we can enter the filter function. We want to filter the data, and we want to filter that where the region column is equal to cell H3. When that calculates, we still get our blank row. If we change north to south, everything updates, and our blank row is still between each item. How about if we use group by? So let's remove the filter and the sort. Instead, we want the group by. For the row fields, we're going to use the product column and the region column. For the values argument, we want the value column. And then for the function, we want to perform a sum calculation. When we calculate that, there we go. Once again, we have a blank row between each item. If you like this technique, then you are going to love our Excel Academy. It contains everything you need to truly master Excel because it's time to stop spending hours watching YouTube videos in the hope that somebody has solved your exact problem. And it's time to start understanding how Excel really works so you can solve any Excel problem you wish. Just head over to excelthegrid.com and check it out. And once you've done that, why not check out this video next? I think it's another one which you'll really enjoy. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.